Hello, my name is Wumping. Previously, I shared about the bug which I recommend bug bounty beginners to start on. Today, let's take it one step further by discussing how to even get started in the first place. So, what is bug bounty? People are usually more familiar with the term bounty hunters. As shown in many movies, they are highly skilled individuals that specifically track down and capture fugitives and criminals for a monetary reward, which is a bounty. But bounty is similar. Instead of tracking down and capturing a real fugitive or criminal, in bug bounty, the targets are security bugs or security vulnerabilities. So, if you so-called track down all these security bugs and security vulnerabilities and report them responsibly, the affected company will issue you with a bounty for your effort. That is the gist of bug bounty. So, is it difficult to get started in bug bounty? Not so much because you don't need to be a security expert to start hunting for bugs. You just need to learn some basic technical skills. Number one, you will need to learn networking skills such as TCP IP model, what are service ports, what is port scan. This is because your targets can be running many different services and on different ports. For programs that has wildcard scope, such as asterisk.something.com, sometimes an easy win is when you found a poorly protected service that is running on an obscure port. In the past, I have found Apache Tomcat Manager that runs on port 8080 and uses default credentials. It happens in production and people need to know that bugs can be found not only on port 80 and port 443. Number 2. Web Technologies No matter which path in bug bounty you want to focus on, be it web or mobile or anything else, you need to understand how to read HTTP requests as majority of products Maybe even your smart IoT washing machine at home is using HTTP protocol for communication. You will also need to have a good understanding on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You don't need to know how to code them, but you should learn how to read them and understand what they are doing. Based on my personal experience, I would say that the majority of the programs that you can find on all the bug bounty platforms out there are mostly made up of web application targets. If you can understand the differences between various popular web servers, database servers, and etc., the knowledge will help you go a long way. Trust me. Number three, programming skills. Many people would recommend folks to learn programming, learn coding, learn Python, GoLang, and etc. Personally, I felt that understanding a bit of basic scripting and programming is a bonus in itself. I know many people who don't code their own tools but they can be successful in bug bounty. Maybe it is much more difficult in the past. But nowadays, you can find tools for literally anything you want to do while hunting for bugs. You don't need to reinvent the wheel unless you have a really unique idea. A simple example would be tools for conducting web directory enumeration. In the past, when I just started as a penetration tester, I was using directory buster. Along the way, I have tried to switch to using GoBuster, DieSearch, Ferox Buster, and most recently, I was using FFUF. All these tools work similarly, but they have their own differences, which I will not dive into in this video. If you explore them thoroughly, you will know which one suits your workflow the best. Just remember to make sure that the tools you use should fit into your workflow, rather than you fitting your workflow into your tool. Got it? So to sum up the basic technical skills required, of course, knowing how to code and understanding various frameworks and servers are going to be helpful in your bug bounty journey. However, you can still learn them along the way as you grow and become a better bug hunter. You don't need to already be an expert in them to get started. It is not a prerequisite. In bug bounty, things changes very fast. You need to keep learning. So if you want to wait until the day you think you are good enough in every aspect, then you start, the day may never come. Next, you have to decide on your preferred path to start your bug bounty journey. I like to tell people to pretend to be a Pokemon trainer in this one. At the start of almost all Pokemon games, you need to choose one of the three available Pokemons to start your journey towards catching them all. But eventually, as you become stronger later in the game, you can by all means capture and train the Pokemons that you did not choose at the start. So in bug bounty, you can also choose between various paths to start your bug bounty journey. I would strongly recommend that you choose web targets as your initial path, 
and then slowly branch out along the way as you become better. For example, you can branch out to mobile apps like Android or iOS. There are also other paths that are less traveled, such as hardware and embedded systems, and also desktop applications. In choosing your path, you can assess your own interest level and expertise. Some people focus on web because there are more targets, but you need to accept that there will also be much more competition and duplicates as well. For example, I have friends who focus on finding bugs on iOS targets only. Therefore, they don't get a lot of duplicates because the folks who focus only on iOS are much lesser as compared to web. After choosing your path, you need to know where you can start your bug bounty journey. There are many bug bounty platforms out there that work with various companies in the world and provide you with an avenue to submit bug reports legally. Some of the more popular ones are HackerOne, BugCrowd, Yes We Hack, and Integrity. They are the most popular ones as far as I know, and they host a large number of programs on their respective platforms. All of them are gamified, meaning you can create a profile on them and earn points as you submit valid reports to them. By having more points, you will be eligible to private invitations to some of the programs that are not open to public. It is like when you play an online MMO RPG game and you level up your character enough to unlock a new map for further exploration. As I mentioned earlier, technology advances very fast in Bamaldi, so you need to keep learning. Some great resources to keep yourself updated are 1. Security newsletter, such as the Integrity Bug Bites. 2. Full disclosure reports, such as the activity on HackerOne. 3. The great bug bounty write-ups by fellow bug hunters on Pentester Land, InfoSec write-ups, and also the bug bounty related articles on Medium.com. Last but not least, there are some great books that I have read previously, and I think you might enjoy them in your learning as well. They are 1. The Web Application Hacker's Handbook, 2. The Hacker Playbook, 3. Real World Bug Hunting 4. Bug Bounty Bootcamp All the resources that I have mentioned in this video can be found in the description below. With this, I have come to an end of my sharing session on how to get started in Bug Bounty for beginners. I hope the information I have shared are useful to you, especially Bug Bounty beginners and aspiring bug hunters. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you have other tips for bug bounty beginners to get started as well, please add them in the comments. Have fun and keep hunting!